Hello and welcome back to Amazing Chest. Today we'll be trying to beat Dark Souls 3 while playing as one of the most highly requested bosses ever, the Dragon Slayer Armor. During his boss fight, the Dragon Slayer is thought to be controlled by Pilgrim Butterflies, but today I'll be controlling him to take on a gauntlet of bosses. In addition to every required boss, I'll also be taking on every dragon boss in the game so that we can see if the armor actually lives up to his name. As always, we play on max new game difficulty and this particular challenge ends when we defeat Madir or if we give up. For this run, we'll be using the Lothric Castle version of the Dragon Slayer and each boss will have their standard new game plus 7 HP. This run was made possible by the Elite Knight's original weapons mod, which was created by the first Hunter Apprentice and translated by Sam Chan. A link to his channel can be found in the description below. There's also an FAQ down there if you have any more questions. Let's jump into the run. Subscribe or the cleric dies. Please. I think he's serious. No, 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 don't do that. I need him for the next run. Well, subscribe then. To you or to me? Can I even subscribe to myself? Do you have a channel? Can I check it out first before I subscribe? What? Did I say something wrong? Wait, 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 hold on. Why? Oh. Did you know that Gundyr's name is actually pronounced Gundyr? I'm serious, look it up. The fight begins and my first course of action is to test out my shield and it is very effective. With it, we can block just about anything, and the amount of poise damage it does is staggering. Right away, I'm able to easily overwhelm Gundyr, and once I realize that, I decide to toy around with it a little bit. As long as we manage our stamina, then I don't think there's a single thing Gundyr can... As I've said in the past, Vort's defenses are good, but the Dragon Slayers are better. We are able to block attacks I wouldn't have even thought possible. After landing a few hits, I accidentally initiate my second phase and the shockwave connects for some pretty good damage. I take this opportunity to go for a very powerful attack and we're able to successfully block his lunge which actually surprised me quite a bit. I go for this really cool looking move and just like that, Bort is down. If you hadn't noticed by now, my HP when using this mod is at the top left. It's also worth mentioning that with this mod, the defenses and HP aren't one to one, but I did do my best to make them similar to the actual Dragon Slayer armors. After some testing, I did scale back our HP a little bit to help balance out the run and to make it more enjoyable. But every boss that we encounter, as I've said previously, has their standard max new game difficulty HP. Back to this fight, the Crystal Sage goes into hiding and my shield does a really good job of protecting me from his magic. Once the sage reveals himself, I finish him off and we head over to the Abyss Watchers. This is not a good matchup for the Abyss Watchers. Their poise is zero, they're weak to lightning, and there's no way around my shield. I'm having a field day in this fight. I'm basically on a speed run. In no time at all, they're in their second phase and surprise surprise, the Fire Sword is also no match for the Dragon Slayer Armor Shield. For the Deacon's fight, nothing special happens, but I will say that fighting these guys as the Dragon Slayer is very therapeutic. I would never lie to you, 9 out of 10 doctors recommend coming here for some stress relief, and if you're having a bad day, this is the place to be. Wolnir. Now, this is where the run's difficulty begins to spike a bit. Up until now, it's been smooth sailing, and it's pretty safe to say that if the Dragon Slayer armor would ever try to link the flame, he would have no trouble reaching Pontiff Sullivan. The Pontiff is way faster than I am, and his damage output is high. As he transforms, I go for a two-handed slash, and it connects. He jumps in the air for his explosion while I switch over to phase two. We trade damage, and... Usually summons a clone here, so I go for a two-handed slash which barely misses. Luckily, the clone is really slow, and I'm able to finish it before it comes out. I need to play safe here, so I use my shield a little bit more. We both jump back from each other, and I barely come out on top. That was a close one. Ugh. 
Those of you who've seen my previous runs know how troublesome Aldrich can be. I open up with a sliding move and Aldrich disappears pretty quickly. He gets kind of stuck on this wall here and it allows me to get some more hits in. Aldrich comes back in phase 2 and I have no trouble blocking his magic or the scythe attack. He just bounces right off of me. I see him going for the arrow so I decide to put our defenses to the test. I want to see exactly what this shield is capable of. The arrows hit me and man, the Dragon Slayer armor is truly a tank. They're doing damage, but it's hardly anything. Once I'm satisfied with our tankiness, I finish off Aldrich and head over to the Dancer. The Dancer is usually pretty scary too, but this time around we have twice as much poise. I start by blocking to see what she goes for and she bounces right off my shield too. I capitalize by going for some shield bashes and I manage to stagger her a bit. She retaliates, but as long as it's not her grab, then I should be fine. I give her a little bit more space before going back in, and I go for a two-handed slam which interrupts that dark move that she likes to go for. The one thing I wanted to see in this fight was the Dragon Slayer armor blocking the spin, and we get it. After two overhead slashes, she goes down, and now it's on to Yorn. As a reminder, Yorm has 57,000 HP, and we have about 3,000. This fight was not going to be easy. There's no way this giant Lord of Cinder won't be able to get past. Wait a minute! Okay, so maybe this won't be so bad? Whenever he attacks my shield, provided that I have enough stamina, he falls back into a critical state and we're able to repost him. As long as we can keep this up for the entire fight without messing up, then we should be fine, and... If your aim is good, you can even time a two-handed slash on his head for a second chance at knocking him over. This weird interaction happens, which I thought was hilarious. Clearly, there's a lot of power behind Yorm's strikes. He goes into phase two, and I have a little trouble reposting him, but for the most part, we're fine. Everything's going well until I slip up, and oh my god, that did a lot. Two more mistakes like that, and I'm gonna have to do this all over again. I carry on with the plan and I get a little bit greedy here. After knocking him down one more time, I finally get the repost and Yorm goes down. It's finally here. So many of you always ask to see the dittos in these challenges and here is our first one and it is a good one. As soon as the match starts, we run at each other and we're just swinging. I very quickly realized that I actually can't keep this up because my imposter has more HP than I do. So I start blocking a bit more and before long he's in his second phase. I go for a two-handed slash which brings him to his knees and he is not happy about that. Now I'm about two hits away from death. I have to play perfect here. I start using the shield a bit more to attack but I overextend and use too much stamina. This might be our first loss here. He goes for the two-handed slash and the butterflies start attacking me too. If I don't figure something out soon, then I'm gonna lose. We size each other up and I wait for him to pull the trigger first. I block his attack and I respond with a jump which immediately bypasses his shield. That was truly a nail biter. Ugh, the twin princes. If I could skip this fight altogether then I would, but... I'm gonna be honest with you all, I lost this fight about 20 times at least. I'm not gonna show you every attempt, otherwise this video will be over an hour long, so I'm just gonna show you the three best attempts. The things you need to keep in mind for this fight is that the Dragon Slayer armor takes time to bring up his shield. He can't attack and then defend right away. Our fastest attack doesn't give us enough time to defend against Lorien because he's actually surprisingly fast. This means that you need to pick and choose very carefully when you decide to attack. You also can't defend against everything. Any of Lorien's two-handed attacks like the flame one or his overhead attack are better off being backstepped since we do have a lot of iframes on that. Anyway, Lorien goes into his second phase and the magic from Lothric is a problem. For this second attempt, you can see that I started backstepping the overhead slash, which really helps preserve our HP, but it was this moment when I realized that this shield bash sort of auto-confirms into a repose, which does a ton of damage to Lorien. And it looks kind of funny while I'm doing it. 
For phase 2, after many deaths, I decided to try something new by going for this move and I pay the price for it, dearly. At this point, the match is pretty much over, but I'm not going to give up. Technically, if I play perfectly, then there's still some way I can do this. Of course, I have to backstep the overhead, I dodge a soul spear, block an attack, and go for a shield bash. Another bash gives us the repost, which I will gladly take. Here I go for another shield bash and press the wrong button. In this third attempt, I finally realized why I was losing so much. Aside from the fact that I suck at fighting the twins, I was focusing too much on the Dragon Slayer's axe when his real weapon is his shield. With my third eye open, I start shield bashing like there's no tomorrow. The shield rips through Lorian's poise and before long he's in a second phase. By now, I've learned how to dodge the magic. You basically just run one direction and then switch directions as soon as Lorian teleports. He goes for a thrust, I block it and catch Lothric casting. We trade and things do not end well for them. I finish off Lorian with a repost and I'm able to get two overhead slashes off on Lothric. I go for the same strat and now Lorian's HP is even lower since he's already died once. This lets me position two overhead slashes and I'm surprised when the second one interrupts the revival. I go for two more and after about two hours of attempts we finally beat the Twin Princes. Considering the Soul of Cinder's weakness to lightning, this match shouldn't be too difficult. Especially now that we know how powerful the shield is as a weapon. After staggering him a few times, he switches into his sorcery form and I run around a bit. Cinder's damage isn't too much of an issue for us, especially since we outpoison. It's really his HP that's the problem. Fortunately, our shield holds up against his 5 hit combo and he doesn't go for his kick much. I knock him down and charge up an attack, and as it connects, he gets his grab. I block his follow up, and Cinder goes down. First try. Now that we've cleared the required bosses from the main game, let's see how we fare against every dragon. First on our dragon inspired hit list is Osiris. I start the match off by blocking some of his attacks, and then I go on the offensive. After a few hits, I start experimenting with this two-handed jumping attack, which doesn't do as much damage as I expected it to. I'm able to block a tailspin, but it looks like I shouldn't block the crystal attack because of the curse buildup. In retrospect, technically all enemies are immune to curse, so that shouldn't have even really been an issue in this fight. I have to remember to make us immune in the future. We get hit by another crystal breath and I land some more hits. I try blocking his lunge, but I can't get my shield up in time and we take a lot for it. I start playing a little slower and this time I keep my shield up so that there's no way he can... For round two, I start off with a scrape and I decide to start using my shield a little bit more. I'm able to stagger him out of his attack and our overhead slash manages to clip his tail. In the end, it's pretty close, but I corner him and finish the fight off with a shield bash. The wyvern isn't the fastest dragon. As long as you can avoid his fire breath, then you should be fine. But if you do get hit, then you can expect it to do a ton of poise damage. I dodge some of his melee attacks and I'm running around looking for an opening. I found that the best time to attack the wyvern is going to be right after or during his flame breath. Blocking that fire will cost you about half your stamina bar. Aside from that, since the wyvern's damage isn't too crazy, there isn't really much to worry about in this fight. The Nameless King and the Dragon Slayer armor are basically two sides of the same coin. We both share immunities to poison and toxic, both resistant to lightning, and we have similar weapon arts. As I'm sure you guys know by now, the King of the Storm is weak to lightning, so this fight is actually super easy for the Dragon Slayer. 
The Nameless King, on the other hand, is where things start to become a problem. While we are able to block some of his strongest moves, he does have the ability to grab us. It doesn't do much damage, but we'll have to keep a lookout for that. Luckily, my shield rips through his poise too, and we're able to repost him once he takes a knee. A few more shield bashes, and it's lights out for the Nameless King. Congratulations, you made it to the finale. Dark Souls 3's strongest dragon versus the Dragon Slayer armor. The biggest thing to know about this fight is that the shield cannot protect us from the laser or Madeir's rampaging attacks for that matter. His attacks are so erratic that it's very easy to get clipped even when our shield is up. As a result, the best way to get damage on Madeir is to bait out his attacks and then retaliate with a few swings to the head. That's easier said than done though, because our axe swings are so slow. On top of that, Madeir can't be staggered, so none of our previous strategies really work. The match starts and Madeir goes for a laser. I run straight past him and use this move to get off some cheeky damage on his leg while he's occupied. I run around trying to bait out attacks and I end up getting caught in his rampage. He leaps into the air, and the best way to deal with the flying fire breath is to backstep and abuse our iframes. It does way too much damage when you try to block it. I'm doing my best to be patient and respect Madeir. He goes for yet another fire breath, only this time I screw up my backstep. At this point, Madeir could sneeze on me and I'd lose. Fortunately, the dragon goes for another laser, and I'm able to use this move again to damage his toe. After some good damage, he enters phase 2, and I go in for a hit. I have no idea how I'm still alive here. I run around the arena as Medea rampages. I'm waiting for one opportunity, one chance to run in and get the damage I need. Madeir goes for the dark attack, which I narrowly avoid, but before long, he jumps back and...